Uh, how's it going? Jim here again. No fancy productions here. Let's get to work. I don't do it at all. <clears throat> this is the uh, passenger side header. Uh, the rest of the exhaust is done. As you might know if you do watch this video that this car never had any provisions for anything. So uh, you're basically starting from the ground up. And why am I down here in this little spot? Because I got too many other projects so I might as well just work the car in the area. Yeah I have a big shop but uh, I've already got the car like leveled and uh, on jack stands and, and where I want it so I'm like you know, don't disturb it, just do what you gotta do there. So, uh, if there's somebody out there trying to figure out how to do something like this, 99% uh, of the people out there, you can just buy Ford and Chevy headers. Uh, so you probably have no need for this. But this is a Buick engine, you cannot buy headers for this car. Um, there are a couple of... Uh, uh, exhaust builders kit they're, they're nothing fancy they're crap pipe and it's not even worth the time or effort or money to spend on those um you're best making it from scratch custom made uh and take it you want to take your time i took my time on this there are some things that i would like to change but i'm not going to because of the cost uh, the this is 100% stainless as you may know uh, this is not cheap this is thousands upon thousands of dollars uh, I this stuff is over uh, polished and inch and five eighths is over $21 a foot so uh, if I screw up I have to either reuse the same piece that I screwed up or cut another piece if I have it uh, I bought an eight foot section of uh, straight uh, straight wall inch and five eighths which came out of uh, Canada very very expensive um, this is, we're talking thousands of dollars so I, I try not to screw up I don't I don't know why people are out there TIG welding uh, little tidbits and shit like that to uh, practice if you know how to weld then you know how to TIG weld it's actually uh, you know gas tungsten arc welding uh, thanks uh, to the lady that finally um, sold this here particular welder that I've been after for a long time I practice on one little piece the first two welds that I did uh, were flawless and I, I knew right after that that I don't have to waste money on argon here in Connecticut this bottle of argon cost me $75 you don't have time or money to practice on shit you get the job done and then that's it so far the welds are coming out flawless I'm grinding down the welds anyways and polishing out the stainless so this is where I'm at this down pipe on the first runner uh, if somebody's out there trying to do something like this, this is the primary tube. Um, from this point, basically, I started with my flanges on the head, uh, on the um, head. And once I got flanges and I have a collector, now I have a starting point. So technically, the first runner is your first starting point. Now, there is a, there's a lot of people that may, may argue with this, but so far, I have found on this car, particularly because I built it from scratch, that uh, doing the first tube actually got me a starting point. The other side, it came out, it's, it's okay. I'd like, I probably will redo it eventually down the road. Um, but that's another deal on another day it's presentable it looks great um, maybe I'll run with it but this one 
since I did one, I knew where I was standing. Uh, when I first did that, I didn't really understand how to hold it with just my two hands. There are, there are a couple of apparatuses on the market for header builders, uh, header.com sells, things like that. They're very costly. Um, I was gonna make some out of billet aluminum with uh, hind joints, and, and that's just a waste of money and uh, time. So I came up with this idea that uh, I basically had some leftover um, exhaust tube. This is just regular um, aluminized steel exhaust tube that you can't really recognize that it's a tube. So basically what I do is I cut um, an inch and a quarter exhaust tube. This happens to be about three inches. I made by uh, four or five of these. I, I call them helpers because it looks like a pair of, uh, the way I did it is here's the tube round like this. And I uh, relief cut a square hole directly in the middle leaving about um, uh, three eight. This one's actually half inch. So say leave about a half an inch or uh, a little more than that on each side like little wings cut the tube down the center so it splits open and then basically what I do is I use a pair of hose clamps okay that's it and it fits directly right over inch and five eighths tube okay you basically line your opening up to butt joint each pipe right up against it. You put the hose clamp over there, and I'm just showing this for demonstration purposes, but basically, you go like that, you put it on each side of the wing, tighten up with a 5 16 uh, nut driver, and you can butt joint all your tubes after they're straight. Uh, you want the joint as tight as possible, that's what I have found out. By the joint being as tight as possible, uh, you can create a better tack weld and this is the key with this stainless steel especially making headers that I found out the more tack welds around the tube the, the better and uh, straighter it's gonna be uh, as uh, a helping hand with the rest of the build going straight and because I don't really have any measurements to go off except I know that I want uh, this 90 degrees or close to it coming out of the head and I want this parallel and 90 degrees going into the header collector. Well, that's what I have achieved with using these little makeshift uh, helpers. So you get the idea. You can put this, like I said, um, you just center this up right here, you clamp this down, and what I usually do is I get this, and since I made this about an uh, inch and a quarter wide, you can get three to four tack welds in a one inch spot. Rotate this 90 degrees, do the other side, and then you know you're totally, totally straight. Now, this is a straight piece of tube. Uh, after cutting this, I run it on the lathe real quick and get it extremely smooth. Um, because the long straight pieces, I know that are going to get straight. The bends that I had made, uh, those were uh, mandrel bent. And even though they're mandrel bent, let me get a tube in. Even though these are mandrel bent, um, you don't know if these are perfectly, this is a 45 and then I got 90s. So you don't know exactly if these are 45 or 90s. But I do know that when they draw this material out, since it's so hard, uh, some industries will fill this tube with a uh, sand uh, or a drawing compound. That's old school. That's like, you know, like 80 years of uh workmanship but I don't even know if anybody's doing that anymore uh, that's that's called a, a drawing machine uh, so anyways today's new 
hydraulic systems will actually pull the pipe into the boot or the foot or basically the uh, hydraulic pressure will pull it. By doing that, it changes the pitch on this straight. Now, if they think, because I bought these commercially uh, made and then bent the, uh, some of them, so even though that they say, oh, we cut these all straight on the mill, when they draw these from their hydraulic press or bender, it actually changes the pitch on the angle. So one machine is not going to be the same as the other. So that's what I found out that each one of these, most of the time, the leg, this is called a leg and a run. So uh, most of the time on this run, uh, this is gonna be pretty straight, but on the leg, that's where it's not straight. You can't tell, but this was drawn and this is perfectly, and you could see that, that that is not straight anymore. It's higher on this side. So, unfortunately, that's what I have to deal with. So, rule of thumb is, is to uh, start with one side. Uh, in this case, I started with the first two runners in front of the engine and then went from there. Once I have a, a you know, a ground point, I know where I'm going. Uh, I'm trying to keep this, the long run on the first tube uh, pretty much uh, perpendicular with the frame. Um, and horizontal with that way and, and, and uh, your, your angle that's more like a visual thing I know that I I, I want them fairly uh, smooth and uh, I definitely want to keep that 90 degree 45 degree plane and, and that's what I was achieving so if there's somebody out there trying to do this try to start with the first one the longest tube um, I also found that doing this, it actually helped me finish the entire back side of the exhaust. That's what I have been doing in the last week. Um, you see the other videos, I had to hand make all of the flanges and bend all the pipe. And um, this is a ball and socket, because that's the first piece I actually started with, was the... Um, the header flanges, I found those, and um, they're not they're not very common. They're, they're very hard to find. So that was a ball and socket, all stainless steel, so I knew that I had to work from that, and then I got this. And uh, So basically by doing this first one, I'm just rambling on. The first tube on the other side, which is the driver's side or left side of the car, is done. That led me into finishing that one header, and then... I finished the entire exhaust with an H pipe and everything. And I showed you that in the other video. Uh, custom made flanges, all TIG welded. Uh, and this is where I'm last. I got Now that I got this one done, I got three more tubes. And that's pretty much where I'm standing right now. So I'm working on the uh, second runner on this side. So this is... This is the second piece. You can see that I have a lot of tack welds. This is still warm. So I have a lot of tack welds uh, all the way around this. Okay? It's perfect. Okay? You notice that this pipe is polished and this piece is not. I found that it's very, very time consuming to try to get all everything out as you're making the entire pipe together. If you can buy the butt bends commercially bent, polish all your bends first. Especially these 90s. These 90s uh, came from a Porsche corporation because these are authentic uh, Euro. Uh, they, they actually they came out of Europe. Uh, it's very, very expensive. So uh, you can call Porsche up and they specialize in engine 58 stainless steel. So that's what these 90s are. 45s are just commercially made 45s. Uh, the problem is, is they're not in an abundance on the market for inch and five eighths header pipe. So I had to source the 45s in two or three different places. The 90s came from Europe, 100%, all is one shot. Um, so I noticed that the 90s on their drawing machine, whoever uh, bent them, 
um, that day or whatever, that they marred all of the inside of the tight radius. You can see how tight this radius is. From here, there was lines all the way in. So that tells me that their boot probably had a lot of marring on it. So all of this had to be smoothed out. And I show you that in the other videos. But for somebody that wants to try this, I gotta tell you right now, you need to do your bends prior to doing any welding, uh, any chamfering or anything like that. Get all of these bends polished smooth down because it's going to make your life a lot easier now this little four inch piece that needs to be smoothed and polished you can handle because you got a whole handle you got really it's literally a handle now that um because on the first side i was actually smoothing and polishing these little bits and then welding them on I, then i realized that well it doesn't need to be done that way because this is already done and I can just blend in the buff into the polished side. So that's all I'm doing uh, on, on the small pieces. On a big piece like this, I'm going to go and buff this out because this, uh, this piece came out of Canada. So I noticed that the, uh, the seamless tube weld, uh, it's a little high, so I have to uh, smooth this out. On these, when I'm welding them, I'm putting all the, uh, the seams, because uh, you don't see them after. You can tell there's no seams in this after you polish it. But anyways, I'm trying to put the uh, seams down because, and you know, uh, less seam is better anyways. So on the big side, this stuff like this, or big bends, do all your polishing first. Little stuff right here. You can get away with uh, buffing this out, smoothing this out at a later date. So this is where I'm at. This is my second runner on the passenger side here. Uh, TIG welded all right here, just a couple spot welds until I, uh, you know, stop burning some rod and getting this fixed. This is just going to be, um, that's it. So you want to, the biggest thing is, is what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to eliminate uh, how many joints that I put together this the first two runners are the longest so there's a lot more joints in there I don't want this video to go too long, but it doesn't matter end of story uh, So I clamp this now it's done. I don't have to clamp it now my helpers or my helping hand pipe Can hold this joint in this joint. So really I only have two and then basically uh, it's just an eyeball look and I let the bottom of the pipe touch this, the first one on the top into the collector. Uh, these are a pain in the ass to uh, weld up in the collector. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they are very challenging. The first pipe over there really took me for a ride. That's why I'd like to redo it. But I'm going to live with it for right now. Uh, but that's it. Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, so let's see if anybody else is watching this and put a video of uh, custom stainless headers that they're making. I'd like to see how challenging it is for them. Have a good day.